Hey, welcome to the Business Spotlight series. My name is Gabriel Moore. I am the senior partner here at Action Coach Vanguard in Central Iowa. Today, I've got Mike Adamson, the owner of Adamson Insurance and Associates, as my guest. Welcome, Mike. Hey, Gabe. We're going to be uh, talking about his business, uh, his journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. Mike, man, welcome, and thanks for being here today, brother. Uh, yes, yeah, give me a brief overview of your background and tell us a little bit about your business. Sure. So brief brief, brief background. Uh, started my agency back in 95. Um you know, started working for an all state agent when I was at Iowa State. Uh, really enjoyed the interaction, uh, the unlimited income potential, um, and just every day something different are happening and stuff. And so from there, um, got in with a carrier uh, that allowed me to still stay here in Ankeny and uh, began my career, um, you know, from a scratch agency back in 1995. So, Long That's time ago. Good. Long time ago. <laughs> I long earned time. this gray. If <laughs> you hide it well, let's just say that. <laughs> there you go. Sure. So, uh, and about your business and, and what, uh, how'd you get into what you're doing now? Yeah. You know, uh, insurance is always something that's intrigued me in terms of people have to have what we sell. You know, if you buy a car, got to have insurance on it. You buy a home, got to have insurance on it. You know, I've talked to a lot of people in different vocations that that always isn't the case. You know, it kind of their industry kind of ebbs and flows with, you know, what our world economy is doing or at the end of every month, the beginning of the month, they start over. You know, our industry and the insurance side really is a continuation of what you did last six months, what you did last year, and it builds. And I really like that. You know, it's not a get rich quick, you know, uh, deal. It does take a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of efforts, a lot of dedication. Um, but it's something that, uh, you know, I am not corporate material. <laughs> so I knew right away that I wanted to be in charge of my own destiny. And, and, you know, this business allowed me uh, to do that. And I feel very fortunate, you know, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of great people. Um, you know, um, I've, I've built relationships, um, you know, uh, with a lot of people that have allowed me to, to, to grow my agency into what it is today. So. Yeah. I feel that uh, there's a lot of business owners out there right now. Uh, that may be watching this that could absolutely relate with what you just talked about, you know, really kind of growing into the role, um, not just uh, funding a business out of nowhere, just really growing into it. I appreciate sure. that. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what role you're currently playing in the business. Yeah. So, you know, there's different terms for every industry. It seems like, you know, the one term they want to use is an agency principal. Uh, okay. I'm the one that pays the bills around here. I guess it's my name on the, on the, on the building, but you know, really I'm an agency owner, but bottom line, I'm an agent. And, um, you know, that is my role. Um, you know, officially, I will say, uh, I apologize for the loud rumbling, uh, Fong's pizza is out Man. and a new pizza place is in. So we've got construction going on downstairs. <laughs> so <laughs> we actually can't hear it. So lucky us. That's going okay, good. Hard. Good. All right. So, you know, that's really, you know, kind of our designation, um, as far as, uh, my role. Okay. Um, so when you're, when you're looking at your role, uh, how, how many hours do you spend working in your business, i.e. like the job, as sure. opposed to how many hours are you working on the business, like strategy and planning and growth, et cetera? Sure. You know, before I met you, I thought I was doing a pretty <laughs> good job. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, but again, you know, probably the past 30 years have been a primary focus of sales and never really deep diving into what it takes to run a business, you know, getting systems in place. And one of the things that really uh, caught my attention in our talks and stuff like that, would my business be able to run the same way with me sitting here at my desk or would it be completely different? And 
it was just kind of a aha moment of shoot, you know, I don't think this thing would run as well as it should without me sitting here physically in this chair. So yeah, that it's has been a wild to think about, right? It's scary to think okay. about. Yes. Because you think, well, I've established myself, so I should be at this level. And then you kind of get a reality check of, yeah, that's not necessarily the case. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, honestly, it's not, it's not our goal to be delivering reality checks out there. It really is no. our goal to uh, help. I agree. Right? Yeah. Uh, let, let's move on to what makes your business so special, Mike. Uh, who, who primarily does your business serve? If I were in the audience watching this or listening, how sure. would I know if I was a good fit for your company, for your product, your service? Yeah, no, that's a good question. You know, I will say that over time, things have evolved. You know, when I was a captive agent, when I first started in my career, you know, it was very limited. You know, that company only specifically wanted these types of risks. And I noticed as I engaged and got further into the business that that circle of people that they wanted got smaller and smaller. And that's what really uh, made my decision up that I needed to become an independent because obviously the more carriers you have, the wider scope of people you can help. And so it's changed. It has changed and it continues to change today, you know, with new things that are coming up all the time with these carriers. So. Sure. Um, what makes your business unique? Why do your customers, clients choose you? You know, I have, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> my parents, you know, are, are pretty adamant from day one that, you know, the customer is always right. You know, they may not be really right, but they need to feel like they've got some, you know, sense of, uh, what is the word I want to use? You know, um, well. <laughs> yeah, you know, to me, customer service has always been the root of what I wanted in my business, you know, um, and we kind of talked about this the other day that, you know, you know, when you're in sales, you immediately look at other businesses and what they do and how they service their clients and stuff like that. Are we perfect? No. Are we striving to be? Absolutely. And every day, you know, I wake up and I want to make sure that my clients have the best experience. We maybe only get one opportunity to interact with that client throughout the year, whether it's a claim, a vehicle change, whatever it is. Yeah. I want that experience from day one to be just as good as it was when I first, you know, wrote them up and talked to them and everything else and stuff. So customer service to us has been a huge key factor. The other part of that on the growth side alone is just being an independent. You know, today our markets are crazy. I've never seen anything like this in 30 years of doing this. And it's, it's if I only had one carrier, I would be in a world of hurt, you know, and having those multiple markets really opens up the door for that customer service. So. Absolutely. No, I, I can agree with that for sure. Uh, yeah. what, what's the one thing that you wish more people knew about your business? Uh, one thing I wish people knew more about my business, you know, as an independent agent, a small business owner, okay, we're faced against these large, you know, and I'm not going to call out other companies because there's too many to name, but, you know, from a just because you may not see us or see the carriers that we represent on the news or, you know, on TV commercials and, you know, stuff like that. And we do have some nationwide markets and stuff, but really the true carriers that, you know, I feel are kind of the uh, hidden gems, so to speak, are the markets that we do a lot of investigating and, and working with and stuff to make sure that they live up to our standards and stuff. But really there is a whole world out there of companies that are really good that you may not have heard of. But we have worked with for many, many, many years. And, you know, even today, you know, clients, you know, that I'll maybe give a quote through this particular company or something, you know, they rely on me to make sure that they're protected. And even though they may not have heard of that company, they trust in our ability to do our job and to do the due diligence work and stuff like that. No company is perfect. I'm not saying right, that there right. aren't things that go awry here or there, but, you know, we are helping those clients all along the way, whether that's, you know, a claim process, vehicle changes, we do all of those processes right here. So awesome. I would say, you know, it's just getting that word out of who we are, what we do and stuff like that um, is kind of maybe one of our biggest challenges, just because we don't have a national backing of a nationally yeah. 
health carrier to to represent us. No, for sure. You're basically responsible. This is actually a great transition into the next uh, topic is uh, marketing. Um, you know, yep. you talk about that national level of marketing versus this local level, you know, sure. and marketing, no matter what business you're in, I think you and I both agree it's something that's vital to every business out there. And yep. often an area many business owners struggle with, right? I mean, yeah. um, so in, in your case, what's what's really been the number one marketing strategy that has brought you the most business? Um, sure. So far? Yeah. And, you know, in working with a lot of new agents and stuff, we have an agent program up here that we that we work and bring in a lot of agents. You know, the biggest thing that I can tell them in you know, I, I'm old school. So, you know, when I first started, the internet was not around for the most part. We didn't have, you know, one click and you can reach thousands of people and stuff. But one thing that has been true over the years has just been that face-to-face -face referral networking. So whether that's getting into some type of a, a, a referral networking group, um, one of our financial planners here, we've, we've tried everything, you know, and um, something that we found is, is it's something that costs money, holds you accountable, meets on a weekly basis is the best thing. And that's what I recommend all of my agents, either start one or get into one as far as that one-on-one -on -one referral networking. Great strategy. Referrals is absolutely uh, one of the very top marketing strategies. It's incredibly organic. Yep. Um, it's, it, it costs uh, the least amount of money and really you're uh, basically leveraging raving fans, right? I mean, that's kind of the, I, the idea of that, uh, you know, it takes longer to build those relationships, but they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be so much more valuable down the road than just, you know, an ad click campaign or uh, search engine optimization, you know, whatever I, you know. Yeah. We've done a lot of different things, but the one true is that face-to-face -face referral networking and building those referral networks up as you as you go along. So yeah, especially in an industry uh, that that you're in as well. You know? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we spent a bunch of time focused on like the business stuff and sharing a few best practices uh, sure. for the audience. I'd love to take a step back and dive into your journey a bit more. I know That's we covered good. a little bit of this, you know, just a minute. I know, right? I know we covered a little bit of this a minute ago, but but yeah. why did you choose to go into business for yourself as opposed to choosing to work for someone else? What was, what was the catalyst? What was the transition like? Yeah. You know, again, just, you know, I, I've got a son who's a freshman, you know, going to college and, you know, dad, I don't know what I want to do. I'm like, Hey buddy, it's okay. You know, we'll figure it out and you'll figure it out along the way. And that's kind of my approach to it. You know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew that, there was something in me that wanted to be my own boss, create something that I could pass down to generation or, you know, whatever and stuff. And, um, you know, that has always been my mindset. You know, I was very independent as a child and just, you know, knew that I wanted to go my own path. Yes, I've had a lot of really good uh, teachers and and advisors and, you know, people along the way. I haven't figured this out all out on my own by no means. But, um, you know, I knew at the end of the day, it would be my decision on whether or not I pursued this route or this route. And, you know, I've done a lot of things that I'm like, man, that wasted a lot of time and energy and effort. And I've done a lot of things that, you know, did pan out to be to be uh, successful with and and stuff like that. So that was, you know, from the very beginning, kind of my mindset that I knew I wanted to go into business, um, that I could be the one that would make those decisions and stuff like that. So, you know, what you just said there, Mike, was pretty authentic. Uh, I think um, when you when you shared that you know, it doesn't, when, when you try to do it on your own, you might go fast. There's like an old African proverb out there. If you do it on your own, you'll go fast. If you do it um, as a team, you'll go far. Correct. And it's, uh, it's really good that um, you just in yourself and your own journey, recognize the players that are in your life that have helped you like you said, to your advisors or mentors or anything like that. That's, yep. that's powerful. Not a lot of people will be able to uh, you know, kind of shift responsibility outside of them. It just goes to show that uh, you're you're probably in for some pretty amazing growth. Personal opinion, we'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, no, it's it's been a great journey, and I'm looking forward to the next chapter, and you know, to see where that brings. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Me too. As you look back on that journey that we just talked yep. about, what's been the most memorable roadblock or hurdle that you're challenged with? That, oh, uh, you're forced yes. to overcome. Yeah, here we go. Right. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, the challenges. The challenges. You know, the 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 early on, the challenges seem monumental. Like, oh my gosh, you know. And now those same challenges, with a little bit more experience and and wisdom, um, you know, seem doable. But there's still a challenge. And so I'd say, you know, early on, it was making that trans transition from captive to independent. You know, that was a big deal. You know, and and I remember having that conversation with my wife that it was like we got to do this, you know, and she was very supportive, obviously of it, but yeah. it was a big, big deal. You know, you, you build an agency and then you literally start over, uh, you know, there's taking a it lot to the of next level, right. You're taking it to the next level, but it does come with the, the challenges and things and stuff like that, that, that come with it. But I knew in the end that was going to be the best thing for my clients. So I didn't look back. We made it through it and we continued to, you know, grow from there. So that would have been my biggest challenge early on. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, yep. Let's fast forward a little bit um, sure. and look at what comes next. Where do you see the business now in about three to five years? What's it looking like? Well, with your help, uh, it would be <laughs> nice to answer that question. Would your business run the same with or without you? And so those are some of the challenges. You know, I am very much. Uh, a personality uh, and uh, feel that it's only me that can take us there. And I've got to rely on key people, uh, whether they're here already in my agency or will be coming to my agency over those next few years and stuff to help me accomplish that. Because it's not that I'm looking to get out of anything or whatever. It's just I know that if I want to grow my agency to the next next level, I can only place so many hats on my head. And as you can see, I, I got plenty of room on there for it, but, you know, I, it's just smart business. You know, it's, it's, it's taking your business to that next step that I think every business owner knows in the back of their mind, you know, yeah, man, yeah. I, I, I would love to take a vacation for a week and, you know, not have 500 calls or emails that I got to review or whatever, just that You're confidence. That everything is okay. And that it's, you know, You've got your systems and your people in place to make that possible. And so yeah. that's really the, the next leap that I'm looking forward to diving into and stuff with action coaching with you. So, yep. yeah, I think that's awesome, Mike. And, and, and you know, um, it's taking that leap, realizing that you actually can get there. Right. I mean, because I think that's right. it, it takes faith. It takes faith that uh, it's a reality. It's not just for businesses that aren't you. And, and it, we kind of get in our own heads a little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, we cut, we've covered a lot in this conversation today. For those who are watching, I highly encourage you to save this and come back a few times for an additional watch because there's a lot of great stuff that uh, Mike and I shared on this. Um, as we begin to wrap up, though, Mike, I got a few rapid fire questions. These are quick top of your head questions. One word answers or one phrase answers. Are you ready to go? Okay. I'm ready. Let's go. First one, what is the key to success for you? key to success uh work you work. work hard you work you work hard you work every day and you know uh nothing happens it's kind of like the old saying you know how do you need an elephant one bite at a time you know but it's consistency you know i hear that all the time and people mention that but it's like you know it's the little things daily that are done that equal massive things at the end of your goals or your you know what it is that you're striving to do and and it's hard and it's not easy and no, i can't no. say that i've hit it a hundred times you know but it is something that i strive to do and you just got to work you know okay. so that was the one key answer so <laughs> <laughs> that's okay work i like it work. what is your one piece of advice for other business owners You know, I think as a business owner early on, I thought I needed to do it all myself. And it took a long time to realize that there's people, you know, we have great relationships with other agents. We have great relationships with other financial planners and groups and stuff like that, that, you know, really trying to just do everything yourself, you know, 
is is something that I learned that I needed others needed other people's help. You know, uh, whether that be you know my website design. I don't know anything about that. Well, I'm not right, going right. to not have a website, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to find the best person that I know and trust and whatever to yeah. get that accomplished. You know, and if there's right. things you don't know in your business or your industry, don't ignore them. Find someone to help you do that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Good advice. What's what's one book you're reading right now or have read <laughs> most recently? You got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, I'm not a reader. Uh, OK, so a little bit of homework here was E-Myths. And uh, don't ask me who the uh, author was on it, but great book. Absolutely great book. Good introductory book to get me started, get that mindset going on where I need to be at that next level. E-Myths. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. E -myth by Stephen I'm sorry, by uh, uh, Michael Gerber. Yes, uh, that's if you had to choose only one area of your business you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Oh, one area of my business that I could immediately improve for tomorrow. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say systems um you know my mindset has always been we'll figure it out let's let's get you know let's go to point a to point b as fast as we can well that works for some personalities but not necessarily all personalities so i would say one key thing that i would like to improve upon today would be working on systems and procedures so that everybody is on the same page going from point a to point b okay right yeah and so that would be my one thing on improvement so that's awesome uh mike so far you've been just absolutely outstanding man before we get into the final question of the day how can others learn more about your company how can they how can they get in contact you know everybody you know obviously you know we've got a website out there with all the contact information and just give me a call you know a lot of people uh you know, oh, I don't want to bother him or whatever. Yes, we're busy up here. But, you know, talking to other business owners, you know, I just talked to a kid, 23 year old today, who has been all over the United States selling solar, 23, wow. you know, and wow. I had a, the most interesting conversation with him about that because I, I, you just don't run into that, you know, and, and yeah. so I love talking to other business owners. I learn more about their business and, you know, he learned some stuff, you know, about our business and stuff, you know, it's, we're all in this together, you know, and, and a, the more we, what's that? Ahead, oh, I was going to say, you know, it just, there's always something that I can learn from, you know, other business owners as well. And it's not always about the sale, you know, I mean, Hey, have you heard of this or that or whatever? Sure. But, you know, I just enjoy, you know, visiting with people, hearing about their struggles and their successes and stuff like that and, and how I can relate and maybe help, maybe not, you know, whatever. Right. So that's is it. there a phone number they can reach you at, Mike? Absolutely. Our telephone number is 515-965-5552 or reach out to us on the web. Uh, our webpage is just at adamsoninsurance.com. So. Perfect. Last question. Yes. What is most inspiring to you today? Uh, you know, we live in a great country where you can be the master of your own ship. Um, the, the the freedoms that we have today are tremendous and the capabilities of what that brings with it are endless. And so to me, you know, I'm very grateful for being in an opportunity in, in a town that I've grown up in. Um, the people that I work with, uh, you know, and my clients, you know, they trust me with their daily uh, insurance needs and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm blessed. So that's it. Ah, uh, man. Thank you so much. You uh, thank you. Yeah. Gabe. yeah. As we wrap up, Mike, I just want to say thank you. This has been an amazing sure. spotlight on your journey as not just a business, but an yeah. owner as well. And I am deeply grateful that you allowed me to look under the hood with you for more about Adamson insurance and associates. Sounds I'm good. Yeah. I'm definitely looking to see how you and your business take it to the next level because I know it's going to happen. This has been uh, Business Spotlight with uh, Mike Adamson of Adamson Insurance and Associates and your host, me, Gabriel Moore, with Action Coach Vanguard. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.